and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We have a special treat for you on this week's show. Think sunshine and lots of cuteness. Mm. You'll just have to watch the show and see what we're talking about. It's all part of this week's food segment, which we hope will put a little sunshine and joy into your life. We certainly do. Also today, we're helping the Boy Scouts celebrate their 106th birthday. And in honor of Black History Month, we're also honoring some local African-American pastors who are doing incredible things to make history, but by spreading the message of Jesus Christ. We'll quickly get into this very busy show, but first, our scripture. We're taking a look at the focus, the quality of knowledge. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19 talks about what actually surpasses knowledge, understanding the true love of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And before we move any further in our show, we're going to do what we do in church. Turn off the sound on your cell phone. I know, I got <laughs> caught this time. <laughs> so that we don't have distractions I in did. what we have coming up. I turned it down. So we are set and we can now focus on what God has for us. There are two kinds of knowledge, gaining knowledge and sharing knowledge with others. Kelly Pritchard is always helping students, whether it's teaching at Allen East, advising the Mustangs Fellowship of Christian Athletes group, or coaching the Bluffton powerlifting team, she is always making an impact on the youth of our area. Andy Lynch shows us how in today's Faith on the Field segment. Other than, you know, being at home with my family, some of the happiest times I have are doing my job, being with teenagers. Um, they're very intricate kids and, and they bring me a lot of joy and a lot of challenge and I just love to you know, I, I rub off on them, but they rub off on me, so I think they make me a better person. Um, and, you know, kind of going through life and the lessons that they teach me, then I get to in turn teach them lessons, so it's kind of a real mutual thing. KP's awesome. She's a great motivator, and it's great to have a, a woman coach that is, like, so, like, influences us so much. Uh, she's a great leader, a great person, obviously. I think she really helps you to um, improve yourself, not only in the weight room, but out of the weight room, and uh, kind of get you on the right path. The girls team started three years ago and KP has gotten students from a number of different sports to participate. To get ready for my other sports, especially softball, I was pretty weak before I started doing this and it really forces you to work hard. I wanted to get stronger for baseball. Um, I enjoy the people around here. I made, I'm making a lot of new friends. I just wanted to I mean, better myself, my body, get ready for possibly track and other sports. I didn't like it, but I really liked my coach, so I stuck with it, and I, over the years, I've just gotten a lot better. <laughs> week by week, trying to um, improve your maxes, all your weights, all your lifts. And through all she does, Pritchard's pointing students to Christ. I love to see them rely on God when things get rough, and to know that um, the success that they have, that's where it comes from. It's, it's not, we live in a world that tells you that, that you're awesome. No matter what you do, you're awesome, and it's because you're who you are, and you can, you know, do all things because you're awesome, and, and we're not. I mean, we're just sinners saved by grace. And so when they, when they can recognize that, um, when they're at a low spot and you can, you know, whisper words of encouragement in their ear and be there for them and just try to model um, God's love, then that, that makes the whole thing complete. Thank you, Andy. Well, there's another organization that strives to make a positive impact on youth in the area. They're celebrating their 106th birthday this week. It's the Boy Scouts of America. They began back February 8, 1910. Black Swamp Area Council Cubmaster and Assistant Scoutmaster Chad Bryan is here with us now to talk about the Boy Scouts. Chad, thank you so much for being with us on Faith and Friends. Thanks for having me. Let's go ahead and just talk about the Boy Scouts of America. Been around since 1910, a solid organization. Why do you believe in what this organization does? Um, personally, I, I have two boys that are in the program. Um, and they, when they came through uh, school, they really weren't that interested in organized athletics. They enjoy playing sports, but not organized. But they really love the outdoors. So that seemed like an, an ideal program for the boys. But then on top of that, when I got into leadership, I started seeing where um, there were a lot of boys that were coming up in, in today's society that didn't have a male role model in their mm -hmm. life, uh, a lot of split families. And uh, so 
it, it kind of grew from just my boys being involved to actually being kind of a, a personal mission to try to work with some of these kids that have some real big problems in their lives and give them a positive influence. So tell me a little bit about how the Boy Scouts works. Cub Scouts is the starting point. What are the ages that kids can get involved and what can they expect as far as meetings go? Okay, um, the boys can start out in first grade. Cub Scouts will go first through fifth grade and then the Boy Scouts will, or the, the, the Cubs will cross over their fifth grade year to Boy Scouts and they have until their 18th birthday to earn their Eagle Scout. Um, so meeting wise at the Cub Scout level it's more of the adults leading the meetings. Um, we do all kinds of activities from uh, science to cooking to camping to games just fun type activities but the goal is to try to teach them life skills, things that they can take from the meetings and, and use outside of the scouting program. And then when they get to the Boy Scout um, level, it's more of an, uh, a boy-led program. The adults are, there, are just there as advisors, but um, there they are learning true life skills that um, they will probably use from the time they learn them till, till they're well on into their years uh, when it comes to just about every aspect of life. So you mentioned the Eagle Scout, which is the top level. The boys start out at a certain point and have an opportunity to kind of move their way up, earn different levels throughout the program? Yeah, so they have different ranks that they have to earn, and parts of their rank requirements are to earn merit badges. So each merit badge has a, um, a, specific, um, a, a specific purpose. Some of them are required for Eagle Scouts, some of them are electives. So you have anything from first aid, to cooking, to space exploration, and, and there, there is a, you know, aviation where they can go up in an airplane, fly an airplane, hmm. and things like that. So there's, I forget how many exact, it's well over 120, 130 merit badges that they can choose from, but they have to earn so many and there, there are time requirements in between them as well. So we're looking at leadership skills, goal setting, uh, working as a team, a lot of great aspects that are being built, but there's also a lot of fun, like the Klondike Derby or the camp opportunities. Yeah, we just did our Klondike Derby here a couple weekends ago at Camp Lakota in Defiance, um, where those guys, unfortunately this year with the way the weather's <laughs> been, uh, it rained the night before, so a lot of the snow melted, so they were dragging their sleds through, um, through the mud as opposed <laughs> to on snow, but but our group of guys had a great time. They, they worked together well. It was a team of eight on their sled. Um, and then when they go to camp, um, they, they have different merit badges they work on, but then they have different programs that they call outbounds where they can go out and, um, you know, they might canoe 15 miles. They might, <laughs> it just depends on, on what they choose, but, but it is, my son personally, absolutely loves the program and, and loves the opportunities that he has. And it doesn't matter if a person lives in the city, if they're in the country, um, there is an opportunity for them to be involved, especially, you know, think about kids who live in the city, they don't have some of these opportunities for these outside things. Um, where do parents go if they want to get their kids involved in Boy Scouts? Um, a lot of times, if, at the Cub Scout level, we'll come through the schools. Um, there is in Lima, there is a scout shop on Robb Avenue, right by the FOP Hall. Um, the council office is in Finley, and there's also a website called bascout.org, and there they can put in their zip code and search for units that are in their specific area, and they can then request more information on the groups. All right, Chad Bryan with the Boy Scouts of America, Cub Master and Assistant Scout Master, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. And don't forget to get more information on the Boy Scouting in this area. You can call the numbers on your screen. That Finley number is 419 419- 422-4356 or the Lima office is 419-229-7890. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, helping others and serving others. Already today, you've met two individuals who are doing just that. Here's another couple who's devoted to serving Christ and serving the community. February is Black History Month, and this month on Faith and Friends, we're taking some time to honor those we're making history. This week we're honoring Pastors Michael and Kim Lyons. Pastors Michael and Kim are founders of In Faith Ministries, a non-denominational, multi-ethnic, multicultural congregation located at 1575 East High Street right here in Lima. If you drive east on Reservoir Road towards I-75, you'll drive right past the church and their daycare. 
Pastors Michael and Kim have a heart to see revival and restoration in Lima. Their church supports many ongoing programs and aims to impact people in their current situations and to walk them through life with God as the guide. We at TV44 are thankful for Pastors Michael and Kim Lyons and are honored to feature them this week on TV44. Well, how about a little sunshine in your life? That's what we're bringing you during this week's Lost Creek Care Center Stop in the Kitchen. And this week, I'm over here. We've brought in the Faith and Friends Junior Reporters to assist us with a fun and easy dessert recipe. Thank you, Andy. Today we are making sunshine cupcakes. Grace and I already, already made the cupcakes at home, and today we are going to decorate them. Here are the ingredients. One lemon cake mix, some vanilla frosting that has been dyed yellow, candy corn, pull and peel twizzers, and some mini chocolate chips. So now guys, if you want to take a cupcake, we'll do the first step. So here, I'll get one for you there. So now take some of the candy corn and now you just put them around the surface like this. See how it makes the sunshine mm -hmm. look? Ooh, wait, like mm -hmm. that. Why aren't we hiring this on TV? It is on TV. Then why can't we see ourselves? Because that would be too hard. Where is my cupcake that I can make? Yeah, how so would grab it, one. How would it be too hard? Just because we look at the TV. I just want to eat the candy corn. Well, you can eat the candy corn when you're finished. But can you candy. help me put the rest on? Yeah, <laughs> those things are not easy. And I recommend having flat cupcakes because it's a little hard on an arched cupcake. Yes. Are you going to help me here? <laughs> Done. <laughs> you when you have cupcakes. <laughs> now what do we do? So now, <sighs> we are going to take on my hand. one of these pull and peel tweezers, and we already had pulled yeah. them off, and just make it into a smiley face position like that, if you can see. And can you put that on there? Oh, really, Nathan? <laughs> there, we'll overlap them. Now put that on right there. <laughs> Now, Done. now take some of your small chocolate chips and put the little pointy thing in so you make two eyes like How do you that. like it? Bam. Didn't we make a nose? Do I make another if one? If you want to make a nose, you can. All right, oh. so. Ah, uh, my candy fell out. <laughs> so this is what the cupcakes are going to look like when you're all finished with them. And I'm all finished. These are some of the things. And so now do you guys want to try them? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Again. After I take <laughs> half my wrapper. Nah, nah, <laughs> mm, this is good. Wrap two. No, no, Come no, no, on, no. why can't we eat them? Maybe at the end of the they show. They smell so wonderful. I know, those are really. Thank you, Abby, happy. and our wonderful crew of junior reporters on Faith and Friends. I'm not sure if sunshine cupcakes are part of the menu, but definitely there will be a lot of fun. And happiness as Lima First Assembly of God hosts their second annual Night to Shine prom event coming Friday, February 12th. Last year, Lima First Assembly was one of about 45 locations selected nationwide to host a special needs prom, which was sponsored by the Tim Tebow Foundation. This year, they've been chosen again, which means Friday night, hundreds of individuals will walk through the church's doors to experience a night designed just for them. A meal will take place at Marimore, and then from six to nine, the church grounds become a place of glamour, <laughs> pictures, music, dancing, and absolute joy. That's the night to shine, coming up March 12th at Lima First Assembly of God Church. Has anyone ever told you you should write a book? Often in life, when something amazing, difficult, or life-changing happens, God can use the story to impact the lives of others. That's part of the inspiration behind Jerome McQueen's book, Real Christian, Real Talk. Dancy introduces us to this local author. When we talk to some of our guests, five minutes just never seems enough. And uh, Jerome McQueen is one of those guests. He has written a book called Real Christian, Real Talk. And um, Jerome, you have quite a story to tell. Um, this book is about your life, um, but you said it has been quite a process to get it out onto the market because um, for 10 years, 
you have been writing it. And um, <laughs> in five minutes, can we talk about it? Yes. Um, the, the process that God um, has in our lives, um, it really depends on our submission. For sure, right? To do what he's asked us to do. And sometimes, and in most cases, it's at our expense. Mm -hmm. But it's to the glory of God. Absolutely. And um, the process took so long because it was so difficult to reveal um, things that I had experienced in my life. Uh, and as a result of the things that I had experienced in my life, um, namely child molestation, I was molested as a child. Okay. So that hurt and that loss of innocence, um, it dictated a lot of the things that I did as an adult. Through the anger and through the yes. remorse even of- The shame, yes. the guilt. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lot of Christians, sometimes, I guess a lot of times you have this idea that once we accept Christ in our lives, then everything is just completely erased. Oh, I know. Um, accepting Christ in our life gives us the ability to put the past in perspective. Yes. It doesn't erase the past. Right. It just gives us the power to put it in perspective. Right, and provides the compass to go forward then, Amen. right? Amen. Because um, I did read a little bit about your life and you have been back and forth in your faith oh, yes. um, many times yes. um, so what got you here what was the what was the factor that that um, solidified you and confirmed your belief in Christ and, and his power in your life yeah I um, loss loss I was in a, a relationship with a, a young lady and she was from Russia Hmm. Um, we developed a love affair. Uh, at this time in my life, I wasn't a Christian. Okay. I wasn't practicing Christianity at all, even though God's hand was still on my life. Um, to make a long story short, she went back to Russia, mm -hmm. and we had plans for her to come back, mm -hmm. and we were going to create this wonderful life with each other. Um, however, God had a different plan for me. Um, I wanted her back so bad that it broke me. And in that loss, in that desire to have that back, I went to the only person that could make that happen in my mind, and that was God. Mm -hmm. But in his presence, he began to put my life in perspective. And it taught me to seek first the kingdom of heaven oh, and yes. its righteousness. Yes. And everything else will be added unto you. Not what we desire, but what he desires and, for our life. Oh, don't you think that that is the answer? And that if so many of us, especially our teenagers today, could learn that, they would. Yes. I mean, like you said, life is not a uh, bowl of cherries. And, you know, yes. it doesn't go the way we always intend it to go. Yes. But um, if we would just realize that. How to, how to make our priorities, and God should be first, always. Always. You Amen. know? So, um, your book, we can find it on Amazon. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it, what do you hope that readers take from it? What I want readers to take from this is that no matter where we are in our walk with Christ, Jesus loves you just the way you are. And our Christian faith is a process. It's a process that has mm -hmm. to be walked out. Uh, and the more we submit to the process, then God creates us in his image more and more and more. And you don't ever have to be ashamed of anything that has happened to you or anything that you have done that could have been harmful to others. Oh. Because a lot of people carry that guilt, and, and I carried that guilt. Mm -hmm. um, and my story, oh, it's just, just not enough time. Um, Praise God, though, it's that you got to this <laughs> place, though, I have to say, because we all do. We are, none of us are perfect. Yes. By far. And, um, and it's just great that 
we realize that we can't ever do enough to be worthy, but we are worthy. We are worthy. You know? Yes, we are. It's just amazing. Yes. So, yes. Jerome, thank you so very much thank for being so with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's great yes. to meet you. Yes, likewise. All right. Hopefully thank you. Hopefully we'll be back again. Absolutely. All right. Back to you, Jen. Thank you, Nancy. And it's giveaway time. One of our featured giveaway items are those cupcakes. You know, I bet you those would go well, especially considering who made them, those precious sweet hands. <laughs> who, who wouldn't want sunshine cupcakes? I want some. Do we have any left? You have, to enter, you you have to enter to win. I have to go to faithandfriends.wclw.com and enter my name, just like you can get a set of books written by singer Natalie Grant. Junior reporter Grace Beck gives us a review of book one. The London Art Chase by Natalie Grant is book one in the Glimmer Girl series, published by Zonder Kids. This book is an adventure and mystery story which follows the travels of twins Mia, Maddie, and their little sister Lulu. The girl's mom is a famous singer, and that is what takes them around the world. In this story, they find themselves in London, but what was supposed to be a fun getaway for the girls turns into an investigation as they witness an art theft, and the next thing you know it, these three fun and adventurous sisters are following the thief through London. The story is exciting and kept my attention. In fact, I read the entire book in less than a week. The Glimmer Girls books are a part of the Zonder Kids Faith Girls series and are written with 8 to 12 year old girls in mind. Something I really liked is how the family was very close and they almost always stuck together. The Glimmer Girls tell their readers that no matter what kind of person you are, God created you for a special purpose and you don't have to be any certain type of person other than what God created for you to do. All you have to do is be yourself. Thank you, Grace. Maybe I'll pick up a copy. You can win. You are not between the ages of 8 and 12. But I can buy the book and enjoy. You're going to have an 8-year-old daughter in a few years. Not for a long time. She's going to stay little forever. She is. She is our princess. Yes, Anna, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of our three giveaways currently underway, those books from Glimmer Girls. Well, there's still time to sign up for a set of two tickets to hear Luke Zamperini speak. He is the son of Louis Zamperini. Luke will be at the Nicewanger Performing Arts Center in Van Wert March 6th. Second giveaway is tickets for two to hear Natalie Grant. This contemporary Christian singer will also be at the Nicewanger in March, March 20th. And our third giveaway is, like Andy said, a set of books that were written by Natalie Grant. And Andy, how do you sign up? Well, you can go to our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com, click on the contests, enter the requested information, and indicate which contest you're entering. Drawing for Luke Zamparini will be February the 19th. Drawing for the Natalie Grant items will be March the 11th. Okay. Get on it now, though. That's right. Good chance to get your name drawn. It's always fun to get free things. I love free things. Free for yourself or gift to other people. That's one of the things we are thankful at TV44 mm -hmm. that we have an opportunity to receive items like that that we can gift to you. Well, the latest Take One newsletter was mailed to homes last week and it includes information about this year's Faith Challenge. The 2016 Faith Challenge continues this month. In case you've not noticed, the quality of knowledge is our focus. Our key verse for this entire year, 2 Peter, 1, 5 through 7, which lists a series of character qualities that God desires to see in each of us. Last month, we studied virtue. This month, join us on that quest for godly knowledge. Join that 2016 Faith Challenge by returning the reply card found in this month's newsletter or by emailing us at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Hey, but if you don't get the newsletter, well then sign up. We definitely want to be communicating with you that way. You can get on the list by going to WTLW.com or by calling us at 419-339-4444. Some other really interesting things in the newsletter, including a special story on Zach Bowers and his new job at Focus on the Family. We're certainly excited for Zach and Hannah as they are settling in to Colorado. Well, it's time for us to go. We want to leave you with this week's scripture one more time. It's Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 17 through 19, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Have a great rest of your week.